Now that we've got some basic understanding of how and hopefully why a normal EKG looks like it does, let's begin to look at how one is measured. As I pointed out before, an EKG is a tracing formed by plotting the sum of the vectors of electrical movement in a heart over time. I hope that phrase sounds a little bit less intimidating to you now than it did before. The more nuanced your understanding of anything is, the better you'll be able to improvise around it. That is to say, the more you understand, the less you have to memorize. In the middle of a bad call, improvisation and intuition are the best skills you can have. Take the time to learn the whys, and you'll be a great paramedic. The reason I'm hitting this so hard is that, at least in my experience, the technical underpinning of how an EKG is measured is something that a lot of paramedic programs gloss over quickly and a lot of paramedic students' eyes glaze over for. It isn't initially intuitive for a lot of people, but it's incredibly important. If nothing else, an actual understanding will help you troubleshoot. If you can look at an EKG and instantly know not only the physiological issues, but the technical issues, your life will be immeasurably better and your patients will get better care. Let's look at this. There's nothing wrong with this patient, at least from an EKG standpoint. You need to understand that those leads are being recorded at the same time and that there's no way for an arrhythmia and a normal looking rhythm to occur at the same time. All the leads there except for lead three depend on the right arm. There's no arrhythmia. This person is twitching their arm. I've seen this happen in the field and in the hospital. Don't be the person who starts treating a tremor with cardiac medications. Take the time to learn this stuff. It's neat. The components of an EKG vector are its intensity and its direction. For us, both of those together are expressed as a voltage. Voltage is at the same time very intuitive and not very intuitive. I think that's a good summary for physics as a whole. Most people go through life with an understanding that voltage has something to do with the intensity of electricity. If you turn up the voltage on a light, it gets brighter. You turn it down, it gets dimmer. A high voltage power line is somehow more dangerous than a normal one. I think everyone gets that much. For our purposes here, Voltage is a reflection of electrical movement in the body. That actual movement of electrons is called current. Voltage is an easier value for us to measure, and it's directly correlated with current. So, anytime there is movement of electricity in the body, we can measure it as a proportional voltage. I'm not going to hit this any harder in this instant, but for right now, all you need to know is that voltage and current are different things, but when one goes up, the other goes up, and the reverse. They're tied together. I'm going to tack a few disclaimers ahead of what I'm going to say next for anyone who is coming into this with a broader knowledge base than what I'm assuming. If the next few sentences make no sense to you, that's great, because that's where we're working from. But if they do, I'm sorry. EKG signals contain both AC and DC components, and analyzing them like an RF signal might be a better, more accurate starting point. But I'm going to work from the idea that we're dealing exclusively with direct current, because for me, and I believe for most people, it's more intuitive and easier to understand. That technique is going to fail us eventually, but I think I've got a way to cheat us around it. We'll find out as we go forward. Here's a battery and a voltmeter. A battery by its nature has a resting voltage. We can measure that voltage by placing the electrodes or probes of the meter on the terminals of the battery. As I do that, a current, a movement of electricity, begins to move through the meter, and following some math, a number is now displayed on my screen. 1.63 volts, about 650 times more voltage than you'd ever expect to see on an EKG. I want you to appreciate how small the voltages are that we're dealing with on an EKG. They're minuscule even compared to this small AA battery. Again, because I'm a nerd, I'm graphing this in the corner of the screen. Notice the changes that I can make. If I break the circuit, the tracing goes flat, and I can make it go negative by flipping the position of the electrodes. That's our directionality, either positive or negative, the secondary component that makes our vector. And I hope you can see how it's not too far fetched that we could get a graph like this to turn into an EKG tracing by changing the voltages and the timing involved. Let's look a little bit more in depth into how this measurement is being taken. 
I spent a lot of money on the motion graphics here, trying to get every detail in as best I could, and I really hope the animation brings it to life. In this instance, electrons, of which there are exactly two, are flowing out of the left side of the battery, which is the battery's negative terminal, going through the meter, and going back out to the battery through the positive terminal. Note that the meter itself has positive and negative electrodes. You should be able to see that there's a direction to this movement as well as its numeric intensity. That direction, like we said before, our positive or negative, is the directionality component of the vector. By reversing the orientation of the battery, the electrons are now traveling in the opposite direction relative to the meter, and that manifests as a negative reading on the meter. A battery, unlike a body, always spits out its electrons in the same way, from the negative terminal, regardless of the arrangement of anything else. So, the direction of the current relative to our meter can be changed by either reversing the actual movement or by rearranging our electrodes or probes. The way we measure the intensity of an electrical signal is by counting the movement toward the positive electrode. Even if we start throwing other electrons around, they don't affect the measurement because they're not on the exact line, the path that we've defined. To summarize that once more, the movement of electrons, which carry negative charge, toward the positive electrode results in positive current. There's some jargon there, and like I said earlier, this tends to make people's eyes glaze over, but try to stick with me. Like I've said, this is really important. An axiom that I'm going to need you to accept is that whenever we take any measurement, it's relative to something else. You already know this. If you're using a ruler to measure an object, you have a defined starting point, and you measure to the end point of that object. We can only use a ruler to measure along itself. Unless I move and reorient my ruler to a new object, I can't use it for its intended purpose. When we measure speed, we're measuring it relative to some fixed point. You're not going 65 miles an hour down the highway, you're going 65 miles an hour relative to being stopped. If I also move the ground beneath you, that speed value is going to change. When we're measuring electricity, we're measuring the relative movement of electrons from one point toward another. Any current moving along a line from the negative electrode to the positive electrode is what we can measure. Anything that's not along that line, we can't measure. And here's the thing. You've already met that line before in our block model. We've been measuring our current expressed in up and down arrows, and that's because we're measuring it by a line with a negative electrode at the top of the image and a positive electrode at the bottom of the image. That is why our down arrows are up on our graph and why we don't see horizontal movement. The directionality component of our measurement is limited to one dimension. Only vertical change matters in this view. If it's not moving toward or away from our positive electrode along a line or a line parallel to our negative electrode, we can't see it. One more way to look at this is the graph's vertical axis is a line connecting the negative electrode to the positive electrode. And that's what we call a lead. So, let's redefine our line. I'm going to rotate our electrodes 90 degrees. The negative electrode is going to go on the left, and the positive electrode is going to go on the right, and we'll rename our vertical axis to the number of right arrows because the positive electrode is on the right. Once we start this, we'll see what happens. Our atrial depolarization is the same, and then nothing. All of our energy was moving up and down in this model, and the small bit of left to right movement we have both cancel out to zero. This is why you need more than one lead. You change your view a little bit, and some things might look exactly the same, but it might turn out that there's something you're completely missing.